Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Anthony Smith. Anthony, how are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Anthony, you were scheduled to have a fight at VFC Fight Night 2, November 2nd, but from what I understand, your opponent, Travis Colley, had to back out of the fight due to an injury. Give us an update. Have they been able to find you a new opponent? Um, no, they haven't. As of Monday, they're going to go ahead and uh, um, scratch the fight. They they offered it to uh, three or four different people, and, and you know they all declined the fight. You know it's pretty short notice. So um, as of right now, the fight's scratched. So we're just looking for something else. Mm-hmm. So Anthony, it's a hundred percent a no go for November second. You won't be fighting on that card at all. That's good. Okay. Was there a timeline that they gave to you or you gave to them, hey, since Travis Colley can't fight, find me somebody in in X amount of days, or was it kind of just, we'll play it by ear, and if something comes up, great, and if something doesn't come up, that's okay, too? Um, I kind of wanted a timeline. You know, we kind of both wanted a timeline. I don't like like waiting down to the last second um, to find out who my opponent is. It's just not a... It's not a comfortable situation for me. I, it's, it's hard for me to, to really focus on training when I don't know what I'm training for. Um, and it's, it's, just, it's just real stressful. So, we, you know, we decided if they didn't find anyone Sunday um, that, that we were going to go ahead and scratch the fight and I would move on. Mm-hmm. Just curious, and this is, isn't the first time that I've interviewed a fighter whose opponent backed out on them or, or you know, uh, they had a late cancellation of a fight, but I, for some reason I've never really got into this and really dug deep into uh, asking a fighter about this, but since this situation has come up, I feel this is a great time to bring it up. When you get the call saying that your opponent can't fight on a certain date and you've been doing all this training and, and you're preparing and you're trying to peak for a date uh, to fight, just curious, when you get that call, what's the reaction? Is it disappointment? Is it anger? You know, what goes on in your head when you get that that call? Um, for this specific fight, I was mm-hmm. extremely angry. Right. I was, I was pretty pissed off, man. Um, just because it's getting close, you know, this is my, I, I rushed um, to get back from my injury. You know, I, I, I worked really, really hard mm-hmm. um, for, to, to push this timeline. You know, I'm coming back about two months early. Um, so... You know, I was I, I just worked really, really hard, and I, and I, you know, I'm dropping a weight class too at the same time. So I, I've spent a lot of work going into this into this training camp, and I'm extremely frustrated. Um, and, and and the the specifics of the situation um, angered me too. But normally, you know, I haven't had for, I've been pretty fortunate. I haven't had a whole lot of opponents back out, and usually my manager's pretty good about um, by the time that I know that my opponent backed out, there's usually already another one. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I got I got a really great manager, and he really pushes to make sure that they find me an opponent before they even know me. Mm-hmm. So before I even know, usually I have an opponent, or a, a replacement already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was going to be my next question because usually when guys back out of a fight so close to the fight, usually the promotion comes with somebody. Hey, your original opponent was injured, but we got this guy for you. Do you want the fight? Usually that that comes together. So that's kind of surprising that didn't happen to you. Um, what well, you know here here locally, you know, in, in the Midwest, it's. It's, it's pretty hard for me to find a fight with anyone mm-hmm. local, right? And and I think that you know they they really wanted someone local because I'm actually I was actually the out of town fighter coming in, mm-hmm. right. so you know, there wasn't anyone local that, that you know, anywhere in the four state region that was going to take that fight on on short notice, you know. And, right. And that's but you know that's just unfortunate. There's nothing I can do about it, you know. So I've kind of I'm over it now. I've moved on. Mm-hmm. How long was this training camp for you? Oh man, since I. <laughs> The way the way that I feel, I feel like this training camp started in July, mm-hmm. right? Um, because I knew that I wanted to be on this card. You know, we we had talked about it with the promoter, and we knew about where my timeline was going to be, and I didn't like it. So I, I wanted, I knew, I knew that this card was coming up, and I, so I started, I started pushing for this card in July. I was in a, a straight, a straight, a straight brace at, at a thirty degree angle for six weeks, and as soon as I got out of that, I started working towards the date. So it seems like I've been doing it for a long time, but. I started really, really hitting it hard, probably September 1st, like right at the beginning mm-hmm. of September. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. How was the camp going? Was it a good camp leading up to this fight? You know, how would you rate this camp? Oh, it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. It really was. Um, I'm doing a lot of things different just in life in general. So it was a little different than, than the other ones. Um, truthfully, I wasn't. I wasn't training as much as I'm as I'm normally used to, and that's that's kind of a thing that we're gonna we're gonna try in these next couple these next couple camps because I, I do think that I've had an overtraining issue, and I think mm-hmm. that's why I've been having a problem with injuries. Right. So it's it's been it was a lot less stressful. Um, and I'm you know I'm not gonna say it's the best camp I've ever had. Right. 
it, it was pretty good. It really was. It was. I was real. I, I didn't have any real stress. I didn't have any. You know, there wasn't any of the stress of it being a UFC or a strike force fight. You know, I was just a, a fight because I because I enjoyed fighting. I really don't need to fight. Um, you know, so that's why I think that it went so well. Is that, you know, I don't I don't have to. You know, I want. And I think that's why I'm most dangerous. I don't think. I think I'm more dangerous when I don't when I don't when I just want to fight and I don't have to. Mm-hmm. So it was it was going pretty good. Mm-hmm. It really was. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the drop down to 170. Just curious, why did you decide to make the move down to welterweight? Um, it's, it's kind of something I've been mulling over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I got a couple. You know, I, there's a couple guys that I know. You know, a couple of players that that fight at 185. You know, in the UFC, and right. they're just so much bigger than I am. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm, I'm a little taller, but as far as as you know general size, like, they're just, they're just bigger than I am, and I, and I don't ever feel like, I didn't really feel like that I was getting, I never felt like I was getting overpowered or manhandled or anything like that on 185, I just think that I can make 170, you know, it, it, and it's not going to be easy, it's not going to be fun, but I think that I can do it, so the way, the way I guess I look at it, if I can, why not, you know, why not get that extra, that extra size advantage, uh, you know, I, I don't know too many 70 pounders that are, that are 6'4", mm-hmm. and right. I, I think that it would just be a... Um, a useful advantage for me to, to have that size and length advantage. Uh, other than that, there there is no real reason. I think I, I think I just want something new. You know, I, I think that I really got a shot to, uh, to to be a world champion. You know, in the next five years, and, and I think that this is my best move. That's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Now, have you done a test cut to see if you can make the weight, or were you kind of just going, you know, doing the weight cutting process just specifically for this fight? Was there ever a time when you attempted to do this before, or were you just going to kind of do it and then fight? Um, my, my this this next fight that just got scratched right. um, was a catch weight. Oh, I see. It, I see. it was it was a catch weight at one seventy eight, but I know I know I can get to one seventy eight. I just want to I, I I'm sure I can get there. I just want to know how I feel when I get there. Mm-hmm. So this fight was kind of my test. I'm working my way down there. I know that I, I know for sure I can get to 78, and I wanted to see, you know, how I felt once I got there. I, you know, maybe I, maybe by the time I got to 178, I'd, I'd feel like shit, and I'd call it quits and not do it. But, you know, um, I, when I was in Brazil, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was in Brazil, that's when I really, that was kind of when I made the decision. Um, I woke up without, I, I ate my ass off in Brazil, because their food mm. is awesome. Right. I, I, I ate and ate and ate, and... I was still training hard, and I was still, you know, when I was there. And the day before the the day of weigh-ins, I woke up naturally without cutting anything. No, no, I didn't. I didn't cut my carbs and cut my sodium. Nothing at 188. It was, it, it, and that was just for my training camp. And if I'm, just, I mean, there's no reason for me to be fighting at 185 when I'm waking up two pounds overweight. Mm-hmm. You know, right? What's your weight at right now? Good. Go ahead. Oh, what's your weight at right now? Um, right now I'm probably ninety six, mm. or ninety six probably. Mm. But I was as low as um as eighty nine at one point in time. Mm. Right before probably last Friday, I was in the I was in the one eighties already. Mm. So this might be a, a crazy question because your fight just got canceled. But was there ever a time where you thought, well, since I'm already starting to drop weight, let me do you know just a test cut. Let me let me try to get down to 170 since I've already started shedding some weight. Was that ever something that you considered? Yeah, it was. Um, I had a, before I, I found out that he had backed out last Thursday. Right. I had a friend fight in Denver on on Friday, so the plan was actually to go ahead and, and cut weight with him before his fight just to see how far I could go without without killing myself, you know? Mm-hmm. That was kind of the idea, that I was going to just do the test cut right then because it was far enough out that it wouldn't have mattered, you know? Right. And right. and just cut with him and see how far I could get, and that was when I was in the 180s. Mm-hmm. And I was going to try to get to 78 and just see how I felt right then, but, you know, I, he backed out and there was no reason to do that. Mm-hmm. So. Does your move down to welterweight have anything to do with your last two fights, both being losses, or is it not at all related to each other. It's just you're looking for that size advantage. Oh, um, it is. It is. Okay. Um, you know, when you, when you lose two fights like that, and you you know, you, you know you sit back and you try to figure out like what, what's going on here. Like both of those guys, I'm 100 percent positive that I can, and I and I and I'm trying to figure out why. You know, and and you know, I did have a, I did have a little bit of a problem with Hodger because he was so big, and you know, Brog and Nato, he wasn't he wasn't extremely big or anything, but what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to make sure that I get every advantage that I possibly can. And both of those fights, I, I you know, I never lost it, and, I'm, and I, I don't like losing. And so I, I, you got to sit back and you got to reflect on your on your career and the things that you're doing, and and figure out 
how you can make sure that you're doing everything you possibly can to win. And if it's a possibility that I can make 170, then I think that that's a good move to make. And that's kind of, you know, once I sat back and I, you know, I <clears throat> kind of reflected and, and thought, you know, where would my career go if I was a, if I was at welterweight? And I, I, I couldn't think of one bad thing out of me come, you know, out of me making it down to 170. And that was kind of what made my decision. Mm-hmm. Now, the Antonio Braga Nito fight that took place back in June, uh, you lost the fight by submission due to a knee bar. Uh, just curious, when you were released by the UFC, what was the reason? You know, did they give you a reason specifically, or did they just give you the traditional, you know what, we got too many guys on roster right now, and, you know, go out and win some fights, and then we'll bring you back? You know, what was the conversation like with Joe Silva or, or whoever talked to you and said you were you were released? Um, you know, they, were, they were pretty cool. They really were. Well. I I kind of expected it a little bit. Right. But, you know, they got a lot of guys on the roster, and I, and I lost two in a row for, you know, under the Zufa banner. Right. So that was kind of his, his explanation. You know, he really he really likes the, the 170 idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I just got to get there first and, and see where we go from there. He was extremely open to to uh, to bring me back. You know, but I got to have, I gotta have a, a couple wins. You know, I'm really fortunate that, that Joe Silva and, and everyone at the UFC really like me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm easy to work with. Um, you know, I show up. I, I do what I'm. I do what I'm supposed to do. And mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, I'm exciting. And and they like that. So you know, he was. Everyone was real cool. I got nothing bad to say about the UFC. Mm-hmm. You said that you saw it coming. So I'm just curious, what would have had to happen to keep your job? What would you had to have done in that fight to keep your job, even though you suffered a loss? Like. Would you had to have gone in there and had some epic war and lost by split decision? And but even though you lost, that would be the way to keep your job. Or was it basically just a loss is a loss, and and if you suffered a loss in that fight, you were going to get released? What would you have had to do to keep your job? You know, I mean, it, it just it just all depends. You know, you never really know. Right. Um, I, I felt like I was going to get caught because I got finished twice in a row. Right. That that was that was my thinking. You know, I, I expected it. I figured. You know, I lost. Two times, twice by submission to two Brazilians, you know, mm-hmm. and and they don't really go into it, you know. They a lot, like you said, loss is a loss, right? You know, they don't really care that I was in Brazil, the most hostile territory I've ever been in, right? You know, they don't care that you know it wasn't actually the knee bar that I submitted to, you know. They they don't care. It's a loss is a loss, and that's what happens. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Now going forward, what are some tips? You know, what are some um kind of leads do you have for finding another fight what does your manager come back with obviously victory uh they're putting on an, another very good card uh vfc 41 i can't remember where what exactly the date is i think it's either early december or late november uh, uh december 14th yeah yeah that's it uh josh near i don't believe he has an opponent he's scheduled to be on that card is, is that a fight that you're interested in and and you know besides that fight if if you are interested in that is there any other possible matchups before then that your manager has uh proposed to you um, no, you know, there's nothing really in the horizon. Um, right. The Josh Near thing has been kind of thrown in my face a couple times. Right. You know, it's been it's been brought up. Um, I would I would love to to fight Josh Near. I mm-hmm. think that's a, a really good fight for me. I think it's a good fight for him. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good fight for you know the Midwest area here. You right. know, he's from Des Moines, up from Omaha, we're two you know two hours away, and eventually, both of us know that eventually me and him we're going to run into each other. It was right. just going to happen. You know, even though we're in different weight classes, we're just it's just it's just two guys, you know. They're they're at this at that level, and, and everyone always wonders, you know, what's going to happen. You know, what are, what are, you know what are Anthony and Josh going to fight? You know, it's it, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I mean, if it happens December fourteenth, I'm totally down for that. I really am. I just you know a lot of it has to come down to the weight. I know that the chances of Josh taking a catch weight with me are probably slim to none. Um, but you know, if we can work it out at one seventy five and see where it goes, December's pretty close. Um, you know, maybe I get one more. Before then, and, and I fit great, and I, and I, you know, I go ahead and make the cut all the way down to seventy. It's just it's all about it's all about numbers and numbers and scales, you know. At that point, right. So right now, if you had to say the weight for your next fight, it would be at a catch weight. Probably. Okay. Probably. Okay. I, I, the, it's, it's, and it's not that I don't want to go all the way down there. I don't want to commit to that if I don't as, until I know I can. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. I may I may get to one seventy five and and. You know, and say that it's too, it was too hard, and I can't make it. You know, I don't know how my body's going to react once I get into the one seventies. You just, you just never know until you do it. You know, and right. I'm, I, I know me, and I'm not going to be able to commit to to making a test cut unless I have a good reason. And so that's that's kind of what it comes down to. You know, I 
I gotta get a, I gotta get something in somewhere in the middle before I go all the way there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely hope that that Josh Near fight could happen. You know that he would you know meet you at a catch weight because I think that would be an awesome fight. A and B, you know I don't really see why any you know any reason that they're not putting that fight together because you know Josh Near he has had multiple stints in the UFC, so I think that a fight against you and him, you know, that would be a very big deal for him because I don't really know what Joe Silva and the rest of the people at UFC are thinking, but I don't really know if they're interested in bringing him back for a fourth stint. So I think a fight between you and him would, would be, you know, a very good thing for him because I don't know if he's going to get a ch- another chance, you know, to be against the, the top guys. So you might as well, you know, take him uh, when, where you can get him, you know. So some guys, really. circuit, some guys on the regional circuit, some guys on the regional circuit would not take a fight against you because they want to get back to the UFC and, and not risk uh, th- their record, you know. Th- th- that goes around all the time. So if Josh Neer were to take this fight, he, he would basically have nothing to lose, you know. I don't know if he's going to get that fourth stint in the UFC. So I, I really hope that fight happens but when you finally do and, make it, and josh oh, isn't necessarily a small guy either. Right. you know yeah. he's a he's a pretty big he's a pretty big dude i've seen mm-hmm. him at the you know at the last cfc event here in Omaha, and you know he's a, he's a big guy he's, yeah. you know he's not that much smaller than i am so i mean i don't see any reason why why mm-hmm. a catch weight wouldn't work it's mm-hmm. just you know truthfully when it comes down to it man it's it's not about me right it's it's my answer is yes mm-hmm. and it's yes all day long as long as as long as it's 175 and and above, I'll I'll do that all day. It's right, just, right. There's no reason for me to commit to a fight at 170 with Josh Nair, but you know, I don't want to be the one going in there, right? Looking looking stupid, looking like the asshole when I don't make it, right? So I'm not going to put myself in a situation to where you know I, I come out looking like the bad guy. But mm-hmm. if, it, if if Josh Nair was offered to me today, right now, if I hung up with you and they called and said right. Josh Nair at 175, I'd say it's a go, right. And another thing that I didn't even think about uh, until you you just started talking was, uh, you know, what other options would he have? You know, who's lining up to fight him? I I I don't see anybody. You know, there's, uh, you know, he's nobody, a very tough guy. Good, but, I'll tell yeah. you that. So th- good. yeah, that was the, that was the first thing that I heard. You know, when he was going to be on this card and they didn't give him an opponent, I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen because I don't know who's who's you know raising their hand to to fight him. So I'm uh, my yeah. hand is up all right. day. Right. And I, I, and I think, you know, regardless of, of, of who wins that fight, I think it's a great fight. Right. Fans, I really do. I mean, I even talked to, you know, to the owner of Victory and said, I'll do a five round super fight for no title. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah. We can, we could battle that out for 25 minutes. I don't care. It, I think it would be a great fight. I think we would both, you know, profit from it. I don't, I don't see anything back coming out of that fight. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just, like you said, I don't think uh, there's not there's not a line of people around the corner, you know, begging to fight Josh Neer. Right. And he knows that, and he knows that even if he did find an opponent, it's it's not going to be one that he's going to be motivated for. Motivated for, he's not going to go to the gym every day getting excited. You know, it's going to be guys that are looking for paychecks that are looking to be able to say, "Hey, I fought Josh Neer." You know, it's, that's that's not what I'm going in there to do. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. I, I really hope the fight happens. But, uh, Anthony, when you finally do make a return to the cage, you know, this is the first time that you're going to be fighting outside of the Zufa banner. Your last two fights uh, were in Strike Force and the UFC, but now you're a, you're a free agent, you know, free man, you know, out on the regional circuit. What improvements and what, what are some things that you're looking to showcase when you finally do make a return? Um, yeah, what, what I really want to do is. I want to fight that I that, that is. That, I'm trying to think how to say this. I, right. I want to fight that I can that I can shine in a little bit. It seems, you know, I've been fighting under the Zufa banner for oh man, you know, two years. You know, right. I was in Strike I was in Strike Force for a while, mm-hmm. and then the UFC. You know, I, mean, I and I, I've never I haven't had the ability in the last in the last two years to really go out there and just. And just do what I'm capable of, and I'm not really sure why that was. Um, I think now I'm mentally in a better spot. You know, um, um, you know, from the time I started in Strike Force till now, you know, as I've gotten older, I've gotten a little more. I don't know, a little more mature. I've settled into right. myself a little bit. I don't. I don't. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I want to. I want to showcase my skills, and I haven't had the ability to do that yet. It's been. You know, I've been fighting five years as a professional. Yeah, five years, five, well, six years as a professional, and I, I have I've yet to get into a fight that allowed me to really open up and and do what I'm capable of. I've trained all over the country with some of the best people in the world, and um, I, I hang right there. I'm, I'm right there with them, and I've, I just never had the ability or the or the right opponent to be able to do that. And and that's what I really want to do. Not even right now, I'm not even focused on 
on getting back to the UFC or getting another big call or Bellator or World Series of Fighting or whatever. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not even worried about that right now. I, I want to get into a fight where I can just where I can just fight, and I, I, it's just more of a pony thing. So I think that's why the Josh Neer thing intrigues me so much because mm-hmm. I think that that's a fight that I can really open up and just and just fight and not be not be stressed or worried or or anything like that. And I think that mentally. I'm going to be able to do that now, and it's you know I kind of I kind of been there, done that now. I'm not focused on oh, I got to make it to the UFC. I got to do this. I got to. I've already done it, you know. And right. now I can just go out there and have fun, and that's what I really want to do. Mm-hmm. Now this card on November second, will you still go to the event and, and be a spectator? Because I I would assume that you've you've sold some tickets. You know, some you were on the poster for you know the entire time this thing was promoted, and you know people came to see you. Is there any chance that you'll go there and just watch and be a fan? Um, I may. I may. Um, you know, <clears throat> I may bring my family up there. We may mm-hmm. just sit in the crowd and watch. You know, I, I don't. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. The only, you know, I, I, I am going to Kentucky for mm-hmm. the uh, fight for the troops. Um, right. right after that, mm-hmm. so you know, it, it just depends on, on you know how things work out, and we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. But it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. One bit of advice: if you go to the uh, VFC show, grab the mic and call it Josh Neer. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sure I can get my point across there. Okay. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Anyways, I'll make sure, I'll make sure that I, uh, I tag him on Twitter in the video. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Anthony, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Um, I always, I always want to thank DC Management, and they, they've been, they've been, they've had my back since. Since 2007, you know that they, they brought me up. They, you know, it's, that's my family, and I always I have nothing but great things to say about them and, and what they do for the sport and the, and the fighters coming up. And it, they're just super good people. They really are, and, and I'm really thankful for that. Um, Larson Motors always takes really good care of me. It's a, it's a hometown sponsor from where I grew up at. They, uh, they always they always take good care of me too, man. And they and they got a super good car collection too. So definitely go check that out. Um, I want to thank my family, as, as always, you know, I have a young daughter that, that motivates me and a, and a long-time girlfriend that, that's always had my back, and mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't be any, any more thankful for that either. Um, and to the fans, man, I, if, if it wasn't for the fans, I would have never made it to where I'm at, you know, and especially the local fans, the people I grew up with, the people that, that, I've, that I've grown close to as my career's gone on. Um, and I've, I've said this a, a hundred times, every time I get in the cage, I feel like they're getting it with me. Um, and I know that sounds super cheesy and super corny, but mm-hmm. that's what I'm thinking about seconds before the fight starts. I'm not, I'm not worried about, I'm not thinking about the fight. I'm not thinking about my opponent. I'm thinking about how thankful I am to be in the situation that I'm in. And if it wasn't for the people that had my back when I was, when I was losing or when I was feeling bad or I was in a shitty situation in life and, and they pulled up and, and helped me at the, at the right situation, you know, that's, I couldn't be any more thankful. For. I have the best fans in the world and I've always said that. Mm-hmm. So. Thanks again. Anthony, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate it. Thank you.